Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today I'm gonna do a video about soldering the bridges on socket A CPUs. So I have been playing this video for a couple of years and the reason I haven't done it until now is uh, I had to figure out a good way to solder organic packaging for the Atom XPs and MPs and so on. So the ceramics that came before it is quite easy to do because the pads that uh, make up the bridges are flush with the ceramics. So you can uh, get solder to stick to them easily and you can even join them. I don't know why people didn't solder them that much back in the day. Uh, because uh, people tend to use pencil trick or uh, sil silver paint. Especially silver paint on the organic Atom XPs and uh, the pencil on uh, the ceramic ones. Obviously that's, uh, the pen is readily available. The problem with the organic patching like these two here, is that the AMD seem to have slightly countersunk uh, actual pads uh, for the bridges and uh, the pads are really small, like the center to center, so like from the center of one pad to another is less than a millimeter so the pad itself is probably 0.2 millimeters, 0.3 at most the thing is with the ceramic ones is that they're, they're quite easy to do uh, so most people could do those if you have a soldering iron um, they, the organic Atom XP on up will be a little bit more difficult. So micro soldering pen may be hot there. I've had success with. So we're gonna show, I'm gonna show how I do that. And the main reason you might want to solder bridges is to unlock the L1 bridge, uh, solder that one. Then you unlock the multipliers. You might want to solder the L7. Uh, usually on the ceramic ones here, we've got an L7 bridge, and the middle one isn't is enclosed is open and if that's the V core so for an atom thunderbird it's 1.75 volts so if you solder one in the middle you get 1.85 and that could be useful for overclocking on a motherboard that has no V core control or very little or if you want to bump it uh, up a bit because some motherboards either they have a hard limit and an upper limit or they have a relative limit to the CPU's base V core so you could bump it that way there are other mods you can do in these you can turn an atom XP into an atom MP I think maybe we can even fool it to be a mobile, but I haven't tried it. But there are different reasons. Uh, we're not gonna try to cut bridges because that's that's really difficult uh, on ceramics at least. And these I think is better and neat. We're not gonna try to cut anything. So this is just uh, trying to solder bridges. So this is my practice CPU and also donor CPU for legs. Uh, I got that from someone who forgot the heatsink, so the core fried. So that's a good one to practice on. And I also have this one for practice. So that's how I figured out how to do this mod on these two dead ones here. This one was core crushed by someone. I got them got it with a motherboard. So anyways, let's start. And I think you're gonna start with ceramic ones because they are easy and they're fast to do. So I got this one. This one is already done. We can look at how that looks. And then we're gonna do this uh, Duron over here. Because this is my lab CPU. So why not unlock it? We have a CPU on here under my microscope. So it's an Atheron 850 MHz. So I have already unlocked this CPU. And the L1 bridge here. And I think if you look over here. So that's the L7 bridge here. Zoom in on that. So that will max out your V-core to 1.85 volts. And over here we have the L1 bridge. You can I ignore that dot over here? That's the same as that one. It's on solder stock to it. So you can see the bridges here. So like L, we got L31 here for example, it's cut there and cut there. So over here we can see I soldered these four here. So this is what we, we want to do. So I got my Duron here, AMD Duron. And so 700, a really crap one. So we have our bridge here, our L1 bridge, and it's all cut as you can see. The plan now is to solder that bridge and make this CPU not locked Duron. So I'm going to use some Amtec flux here. Yeah. There's no need to fill those gaps uh, on the ceramic ones. So initially I just want to like get all these pads tinned. Uh, my goal is just to try to rub them to get the solder to stick. Don't care right now about like trying to solder the actual bridges. 
Jag står inte tycker att det är så sadest att sticka. Det är stuck där för sure. sig. Can sometimes be a little bit annoying. Like I had a CPU I bought from Electro Mind that was corroded. And that doesn't matter, like I didn't complain about that. But the thing is like um, can be a little bit more challenging if you have corrosion because these pads can actually corrode away. This is gold plated sure, but uh, that's just a probably just a few hundred atoms at most. So it's not like it's a ton of gold or anything like that. I think we have all of them now. So I'm actually gonna remove some flux here. Because I don't want a ton of flux when I'm trying to join them. I find it easy to do it without a lot of flux because you Intention and want to make a bridge. So initially we don't care too much about getting the most beautiful solid blobs here. And you don't want them to like you don't want to run the CPU with them like that because that's gonna be a short. I think you actually will kill the CPU if you have if you join the bridges on the wrong axis here. Yeah. I had to get the solder off the ceramics there, but uh, I need to add a flux anyway. Because once you have like connected uh, the bridges and you have a proper amount of solder, not too much, not too little, adding back some flux and uh, then uh, soldering them again, they're gonna look nicer. So I think that's enough. This is kind of what I would expect if you had done it once or twice before. So this is pretty good. Now this is sensitive, so you can peel it off with your finger, the nail. Like I said, the, the size of these stuff is very small, so let's take the solder here. This is 0.8 millimeters. I would ideally want to have 0.5 at about that, so you can see. The dots, uh, like from edge, the edge of the dot here, down here, and the edge here, is less than those 0.8 millimeters. So, on that length, I think it's slightly wider uh, on, on the on the vertical, but it's about the same, I think, on the side here, uh, about a millimeter. So yeah, it's not particularly big. So if you're young and you have some a little bit of magnifying glass, you can do this. If you're old like me, you need a um, microscope. But yeah, that's an un unlocked uh, Duron. So we can test it later, but we're gonna move on to unlocking the organic package of Atlon XP. I have my very dead Atlon XP here, and the reason why is that I'm gonna demonstrate uh, a technique that doesn't work. And also show you what we're gonna do. So these are the two bridges. A solder here. I think this uh, is L11 or something. But there were two bridges there and they are sorted. So we got an L9 over here. So that is kind of like what we want to bridge and we want to make it look like that. But up here we can see we have some bridges. They are in fact somewhat thin. But yeah, this is a dead CPU project CPU. So it's not really easy to thin them and I'm gonna show that here. Also can see here also got one missing over here to the left same reason so yeah and you can do you can damage it with the iron like this if you really push it and try so it's not a good way of doing it let's see if we can find a bridge over here so yeah we got this bridge over here this l9 we can try that one 
we don't care about uh, the holes or the grooves they cut here with the laser right now because the CV is dead so we can't kill it anymore so yeah so let's assume we want to try to uh, tin these gold plated pads here come in with my iron here and add some solder more solder I tried this with different tips but as you can see nothing is happening like I can get a really big solder blob here See if that helps me. And I can pull it over a 9, I think that might actually work. Not even that. Nothing is sticking here. Let's clean this and give it another go. Could try some more aggressive flux I have here. doesn't like to stick so that is the problem now I actually want to do a CPU how I'm gonna do this then I'm gonna have to start out here by filling these small holes here on this 1700 plus. First off, we're gonna clean it properly. So, I just uh, want to make sure there's no crap down here. As you can see, there's obviously an edge here. So the first thing here is to put in some conformal coating into these small holes here. I don't think it's, I don't think you actually need it for this particular mod, but with paint and stuff you need it, so you don't get the short. But I'd rather do this to be safe than sorry, like I say. I got a little bit too much there, so I'm just spreading it out to thinning it out so it, it's not all. I don't want it too close to where we're gonna solder. So that's some conformal coating. You can probably use super glue or something. You could obviously mask off the, the pads if you want to. So this is UV hardening and some heat also helps. This is like a 10 millimeter razor blade, a small one. Size if you buy like a if you buy, if you buy razor blade is like in like the hardware store to the carpentry stuff like that. So it's very small, like half an inch tall. I just want to make sure those pads are really not like gunked down to anything. So should be zero chance of shorts you now. So the next thing is to put on some flux. And I want a small amount here. So this is a container of small balls for BJ work. So those are 0 0.3 millimeters. The smallest I have.
So on the Atom XP we have five bridges on the L1 here because we have more multipliers than an Atom Thunderbird. So oh, that's 10 balls. So now we need a hot air dust on as if this is a DJ rework. So that was uh, around 460 centigrade and 10% airflow on my Aten hot air station. So I'm actually gonna do this again with more flux. Well, that ball came loose, and that's why I'm gonna do it again. Because uh, the thing is, if uh, you don't stay around long enough, they're not gonna adhere in the first place. So yeah, let's do this again. So let's see if these balls are actually stuck or still some are loose. That's the trick here is to get the thing to stick. So let's see if the ball is stuck to here. I have the CPU stuck with some uh, uh, sticky goo, I don't know what it's called. They seems to be stuck there. Well, apparently not. Well, we have one that definitely wasn't stuck there. So let's see if our last one is stuck there now. So now we're actually going to remove them, which seems kind of counterproductive but then that what I found works best so the reason for removing them now is that now the balls have some uh, adherence to the pads but like when you do VGA work they don't cover the whole pad really uh, but we kind of want the whole pad from for the best results and since the pad is kind of countersunk couldn't get down the iron, but now I have something that is uh, not count sunk. So I can actually go in here and just remove them and solder over them and so on. So there should be a color difference. This one should be more silver because the tin now. So what we're gonna do now is add back balls again. It seems, seems kind of counterproductive again, but yeah. It gets more obvious when we get to the end on how this method works. I'm not saying it's the best method, but it's the only one I managed to uh, do with what I have, the stuff I have. And that works somewhat reliably. In terms of not uh, like damaging the CPU surfaces, like I showed before, because it doesn't uh, like you don't have to be aggressive. 
So now we're gonna add back balls again. We're gonna use those balls to connect up the both of the sides with the bridges. So let's hop there those in place. Before we continue, we need some kind of copper wire to connect those bridges. So this is uh, what's left of an uh, ID cable. You want the 80 wire one. So and it should need to be a single strand one, ideally. Maybe something like that because uh, any bigger than that it won't work. So you take one of these strands off here, single strand like so. And this is my knife I had under my suit before and it's about like I said 10 minutes tall you need something like this also later with a new sharp blade no budget crap blade this is my last fancy blade but anyways it's because we need to cut this under the microscope here later and it really needs to be sharp so things don't go flying the sharper it is uh, the better because then things stays in place so I'm just gonna strip this from uh, this insulation here. So yeah, can add a little bit of flux to it. We don't strictly need it. This should be flux in uh, in the solder. We're gonna tin this one. So I'm just gonna tin it with some, with some leather solder here. Like so. All we need to do. So now that's prepped. We come back to the under microscope. So it's time to bridge these. And I tried a few techniques like putting a big ball in between. It kind of worked half the time. But we need all five of them to work and not half of them. So this is a single strand from that 8 pin ID cable. So I'm just going to take my sharp blade here. At least try to take it there. Oh, that's a white knee sharp blade. Anyways, ignore that for now. Keep it in place later. Uh, that went flying somewhere. Anyways, the flux is a little bit stick, stuck or sticky from before. So it's cold now. That's why I'm thinking it sticks to the oh, crap. Stop flying off. It's 
So we want to line this up so they can't take the balls. So let's hot the iron now from the right side here. Blow over from the right side. So I just wanted to adjust that one and it wasn't touching the ball there because I want these to go in the right place and nowhere else. So I would say if you have reball of memory ship or some very small ship that has some basic reballing, uh, this shouldn't be an issue for you. It's about the same kind of patience that you need and a bit of time. I would say I'm actually extremely pleased with the results there. Uh, only problem is I don't know if the CPU actually worked from the beginning. So I might have fixed a broken CPU for all I know. So yeah, I guess we just have to test both CPUs out now and see if we can change the multiplier. Let's start out with the uh, Duron 700. So we're in the BIOS here, and my DFI LAN port is supports uh, unlocking of both uh, the old Athlon uh, Thunderbird, so Duran should work, and uh, modern or more modern as an XPs. I picked that board because uh, later uh, boards that are intended for Athlon XP do not support unlocking of uh, the Thunderbirds and old Durans. And that's because uh, they are unlocked in different ways, change the multiplier in different ways, and the old way of doing it is more complex, so they just skipped it on a lot of boards that are at the next beta. So we can have CPU clock and everything that can be default. I just need to find CPU ratio. I can try 5. I'm not sure 5 works. Uh, a bit hit and miss on that one. We'll see. Some board can't do all multiplies either. Let's see, now 504. Let's see if we can turn off this logo here. Put that to disabled. Okay, 514 megahertz Duron. So let's see here. If we go in here again now, we could probably. Is that we can try 130 minutes bus? This Duran clocks like crap, so it might not post, but we can add some voltage to it. Um, we add on voltage. See if we have a Duran running at uh, 
effectively 266 bus here. 672 megahertz. And go into the BIOS. Yeah, so that works. We can run. Uh, that's the nice thing now to unlock the die like. Like, this is gonna improve the performance more than just increasing the score clock. But obviously, you can do that too. Can run multiply 6 maybe. Don't remember if. 800 Duron. Yeah, so we got an 800 here, effectively, and 110 meters bus. So that's a lot of free performance there. From my experience, it's more worth getting the bus up as much as you can. So you can technically push the bus, bus even more on this board for a But we're gonna go down again because I want to try a little bit high multipliers to make sure that also works. But I don't think we have any, any issues with this CPU when it comes to being unlocked. So we can try eight and a half maybe. Fifty, that's correct. So yeah, that works too. So I mean, if you have a really old uh, board that can only do a hundred minute bus, and assume you can change to multiplier, now you can obviously overtook your CPU. So let's swap over to the Atlon XP. Now we have the Atlon XP that we modified the L1 British on. So let's see if that thing is unlocked and working. Yeah, Atom XP 1700 plus. I think that's what we had. Yeah, and the broken one was an 89 plus. Get into bias would be great. So we can uh, see here we can dump the multiplier again. Let's try and multiply those six. Well, it works on 800. Maybe add them on. Because there's no XP that's low, it just gets a bit confused. So, to unconfuse it, let's see here what could we have? Can we multiply 12 maybe? Like another plus. So, that is working. See if we can have some fun with the bus again. Let's go. Then do a multiplier of say nine maybe. I have a board that has a real issue if it was nine or nine and a half, which is annoying. Well, fifteen hundred yeah megahertz and that only three fifteen hundred megahertz, so that works. We didn't do the math on that one. I think stock for the CPU should be 1.47 gigahertz or something like that. So we're already a bit overclocked both on, uh, on the core and on the CPU here. We could try 200 bus. I did both can do it, uh, but it's questionable if the actual polymer core can do that bus speed. Well, I think depends. Hmm. Kind of depends on the board too, I think. So we can try because I had a long Thunderbird up to that. So let's see what kind of multiply do we need? 200. We don't want 10, that's way too fast. Try 7, yeah, no, 8, 1600. That thing that should turn out to. Yep. We do have to run mem test when run very high buses on old CPUs because they can have issues. Uh, and you can see mem test, you get memory errors. Even if you, even if the CPU core by itself with no, with no block, so that's 600 MHz. So that seems to be working too. So we're actually running effective bus of 400 MHz, and we can obviously do RAM too. So I could technically hook up uh, something about the test stuff, but I'm not gonna bother. But this proves the point that you can uh, now run uh, 400 MHz bus effective bus instead of 266. So. We set my clock frequency here, but we got double data rated bus on Atalans on the Socket A platform. And the same thing with the slot A. Slot A. The K7 uses a double data rated bus from uh, Digital. It was licensed from their DEC Alpha line of CPUs. 
So yeah, this is working really nicely. So we have soldered the L1 bridges on these two CPUs because uh, then we can change the multiplier, which is uh, easy to demonstrate. There are other things you can change. There are guides like you can find information on uh, what the bridges do and so on on the internet if it's something you're looking for. But uh, this guide is mostly focused on soldering bridges, uh, not why you want to do it really. Why I solder them is because uh, this is gonna last. Like I showed off a uh, Athlon 850 before. I had that for five, six years. It works fine still. I got made two of them like five years ago, maybe six years ago. And uh, one of them is my like Millennium Mira LAN rig. And it still works fine. And uh, I never had good luck with uh, silver paint. It always was, it was always flaky and eventually stopped working. And I don't really like the idea of the pencil trick. So the pencil trick works on the ceramics, but this I don't think it works very well on these ones because of the pass being countersunk. I'm very pleased with the result actually, this looks really good. You could uh, cover it up with something like this, uh, was what I used to fill the holes. Uh, you can find this on eBay, uh, Louis Rossman I think has it on his store. Most, uh, most YouTuber that has a store has this or something like this. It's like 10 bucks on eBay I think will last a lifetime. There are different colors too. But anyway, I don't think I'm gonna cover this up because it just looks nice. And I, this is more like a demo CPU because it's a 1700 plus. It's uh, so, but I picked that for a reason, not just that it's not that special, but uh, Athlon XPs and Socket A CPUs in general from week 38 and the year 2003. So week 38, year 2003. After that, they are 99% locked, that's the consensus. You might have some unlocked, but they, generally speaking, they are permanently locked. So they, they don't even need to cut the bridges because they're not connected to anything. So you can do this mod and it won't work. So it's more suitable to older CPUs. Obviously, you can find the highest end CPUs before that week, but uh, yeah. So I don't remember exactly how long. Uh, for how long socket ACPUs were made, but maybe into 2005. They were made for quite some time and very nice platform. But anyways, I think that's it for this time. So yeah, thank you for watching and have a nice day.